many people have alleged that there is a crop circle conspiracy. The truth of the matter seems to be this, that National Geographic Television and the mainstream media in general have often collaborated with crop circle hoaxers and people who claim to be crop circle hoaxers in order to make TV shows. These hoaxers are claiming that genuine crop circles have been made by members of Team Satan. Now whether you believe the footage is real or not, one cannot deny that thousands of people who have visited crop circles have all seen military helicopters flying and hovering over the crop circles. If all these crop circles and UFOs were faked, then why on earth would Her Majesty's armed forces be so interested in these faked designs? This is another aspect to the crop circle conspiracy. No matter which way you look at it, the luminous balls of light filmed in the upper atmosphere by NASA astronauts aboard the space shuttle. The UFOs which we see flying around the skies above cities such as New York and Mexico City, and the small luminous spherical balls of light which we see making the crop circles all seem to be very, very similar. Can every single one of these pieces of footage be fake? Are we to say that NASA astronauts are faking footage? No. What we're dealing with is an invasion. An invasion of small spherical UFOs which I believe are probes from an intelligent race who are investigating us and our planet. An intelligent race who I believe are communicating with us using sacred geometric symbolism. High above the earth grouped together with no explanation. These clips show what's being described as swarms of UFOs. Earlier this year in Seoul, in South Korea, a crowd gathers to stare up beyond the skyscrapers into the sky. A group of objects hover above the center of the city for a few seconds, then they disappear. In Mexico, three years earlier, a very similar sight. Clearer this time, the group of white objects are baffling the people below. Zooming in still closer, we find that there are even smaller groupings. Over New York City last year, what looks at first like the vapor trails of aeroplanes. A closer inspection reveals there are dozens of apparent objects seemingly arranged in some sort of formation. Just before the footage comes to an end, one of the objects appears to come much closer. Talking 
about this a few years ago was extremely dangerous. Now that we have YouTube and more social networking devices, such as even uh, Rupert's MySpace, uh, this is really getting out in such a way that they can't control it. They must just be really, if you can use the expression, shitting themselves over this because they can't control people now talking about the elephant in the room, what is so obvious to, to all of us. Now, in 2006, my estate here in the south of France was chemtrailed. And chemtrails are a very, very strange phenomenon. You have very large planes, uh, about the size of uh, large passenger jets. Sometimes they look very obviously like military planes that have had tanks added to the undercarriage area of the plane. And we had four very large planes fly wingtip to wingtip across the sky here, only across my estate. They released an aerosol-type trail, and the contents of these trails have been analysed by various people, and one of the most important constituents of this aerosol vapour, this so-called chemtrail that comes out of these planes, one of the most important ingredients is barium. Now, what we saw, and there was, by the way, 30 people staying at my house here at the time, and the event was filmed on five different video cameras uh, by five different people. Um, what we saw is we saw military jets, tiny, single-piloted military jets, definitely military jets, weaving in and out of the chemtrail. Now, I'd already seen this phenomenon from video footage which I'd been sent by a viewer of the Enigma channel in 1994, and that event took place in Arizona. Um, there is obviously a clear relationship between the military jets, the large jets that are releasing this chemtrail aerosol, which is mostly barium, and spherical UFOs. And it's fascinating to see so many websites and books and magazine articles being published about chemtrails, which refuse to mention that these small spherical UFOs, the exact same small beach ball sized spherical UFOs which we see making crop circles, often appear flying and weaving in and out of the chemtrails of these uh, aerosol military craft.
Now, why are those military craft following the tank planes? It is my conclusion that those military craft are studying these small spherical UFOs and that the spherical UFOs, in turn, are studying the chemtrail phenomenon. In 2001, a friend of mine went to the Biggin Hill Air Show and filmed a small spherical UFO flying next to the undercarriage of a Russian tanker plane. Now at that same show, a news report broadcast by the BBC shows a military jet crashing. Now when I analysed the footage, there was a very, very small spherical UFO flying in a looping trajectory behind this military jet. And I suspect that this small spherical UFO clipped the tail fin of this jet and caused it to crash. Now as the plume of smoke from this crashed jet was filmed by the BBC, a group of larger self-luminous balls of light can be seen surveying the wreckage. These UFOs are not flares because flares do not move sideways. These are most definitely intelligently controlled spherical UFOs much the same as those which were reported by pilots during the Second World War. This phenomena has been known about by Her Majesty's Royal Air Force for many, many years. And pilots in the war used to call these UFOs Foo Fighters. Amazingly, this is not the first time a spherical UFO has collided with an aircraft at an airshow. It has happened before in Brazil. Now why? Why are these small spherical UFOs so interested in the aircraft at airshows? It could be that these are probes which are monitoring mankind's development of advanced technology. Or, perhaps, it might be the case that this jet was maybe used in some kind of secret mission, perhaps tracking UFOs in chemtrails, and had successfully fired a missile at one of these UFOs, and the intelligences controlling these spherical unknown objects decided to pay back. Whatever the case, we can see that these UFOs have a kind of snide, strange agenda. They are possibly causing accidents, they're causing jets to crash, and they are monitoring us. I would like to welcome all of you to what is probably the world's most complicated mystery. And it's a mystery which I intend to fully unravel and explain in this film. And I've decided to call this film The Crop Circle Conspiracy.
Space camps is really what the world needs. It's a subject which I take very, very seriously. The question of do UFOs exist is over. I'm just one of many millions of people who've seen, you know, very strange things in the sky. I saw my first UFO when I was 12 years old in London and airline pilots see them, NASA astronauts see them, Russian cosmonauts see them, and this question of you know, whether extraterrestrials are visiting the planet in spaceships is just a redundant question now. It's a subject which I take very, very seriously because we see them. They appear on radar. NASA track them. They uh, have been photographed by weather satellites and space camps now will train a whole new army of people around the world to use the new generation of high definition cameras uh, which are connected to refractor telescopes and night vision equipment and we connect uh, the output uh, of the telescopes and the high definition cameras to plasma screens and then we use time lapse and time lapse compresses the night sky and you can watch eight hours of the night sky in just a few minutes and it can be automated the new telescopes they have GPS we can dial in the name of any celestial object any star any galaxy and the GPS controlled telescopes will automatically find those celestial objects for us and then track them as they move across the night sky and every morning you can watch the previous night sky in a few moments and it's very easy to then be able to recognize what is an airplane what is a shooting star what is a helicopter and what is a ufo I was 12 years old. I was uh, living in London and I went up to some fields that had a panoramic view of the city uh, with a friend of mine and a small telescope. And we were both 12 years old and we were looking at the belt of Orion, three stars in a row. Well, I thought that that's what I was looking at. But uh, after a couple of moments, the right hand and left hand stars uh, moved and they moved around and uh, did a 180 degree uh, rotation and took up each other's uh, uh, places. And we realized that these were not stars and it really, really terrified me. It was a, a life-changing moment and I remember just turning around to my friend and saying look I, I'm getting out of here because this is really really scary and I just ran and I ran and I ran and I ran all the way home and I became one of those people you know that one of those people that you know is a believer I've, I've seen something in the sky which is very odd, very strange. And everybody that I told, you know, they, 
they do, didn't really take it that seriously. But ever since then, uh, it's it's been a constant theme. It's been something which I've been constantly interested in. It's something that has been driven into me. The experience has sort of uh, fueled uh, nearly everything that I've done, and I've always. Um, been making films and documentaries and TV shows about extraterrestrial life and the mysteries of the cosmos. And then what I what I did is I signed up for a uh, night school uh, course at uh, Greenwich University uh, and studied astronomy. I remember the first time that I got a high definition video camera and the first thing that I filmed was the moon and it was a JVC um, PD-1 high definition 720p high, de high definition video camera and I took it outside and I was amazed that it had 200 times digital zoom, digital magnification and this was about six years ago and I realized that this is going to change the world. These cameras which you can go into you know your local store and you can buy these high definition cameras with 200 times digital zoom and you can zoom into the lunar surface. And I, I remember standing on the terrace uh, recording the moon and I knew at that stage that if I could gather, if I could uh, train an entire global team of people using high definition cameras that we would smash this monopoly on science which is being orchestrated and run by NASA. I've given up waiting for some uh, official announcement. I've really uh, just sort of given up hope on the Ministry of Defence. I've written to them many times. I've uh, submitted Freedom of Information Act requests and you just get these ridiculous stock answers. And the answers that I get from NASA and the answers I get from Ministry of Defence have never satisfied my curiosity and they have no relationship to the everyday experiences of NASA astronauts who have filmed UFOs um, from from the space shuttle on at least four or five dozen occasions
one day after I'd made a, a film about crop circles and UFOs, um, about a month after the film was released, about 10 years ago, I started to uh, receive uh, cardboard boxes which had no postcard or letter in them. Uh, they were full of VHS cassettes. And somebody had recorded the direct feeds from the space shuttle as it orbited the Earth. Um, now these uh, pieces of video footage had actually been shown on NASA Select Television. But the videotapes, which I received anonymously in cardboard boxes, were uh, the raw feeds from cameras which the astronauts were using. The video cameras which are aboard the space shuttle have um, filters on them. They have night vision uh, capability. They have image intensifying capability, which Based degrades the quality of the actual video image, but uh, that whole period proved to me again that there was something very, very odd happening in the space immediately around planet Earth, and that NASA astronauts were basically spending all of their time recording these unidentified flying objects. Looks like you got an object right in front of you, Mark. Can you look out there? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Never mind. Are we missing something? It's about your uh, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock going away. Don't worry about it. And then the day after Roswell was published, and this is an astounding book, and if the things which are said in that book are true, then we are not only in a situation where the Earth is being visited by extraterrestrials, but we are also in a situation where the Star Wars weapons program, which was meant to be uh, a kind of protective shield against nuclear attack is actually proactively being used to wage a war on extraterrestrial craft. And this is happening outside of any democratic process. It's happening outside any public scrutiny and the Daily Mail newspaper in London recently uh, released a secret memo from the Ministry of Defence saying that they had plans to shut down the UFO report email uh, system which allows members of the British public to actually report UFO sightings. You would think that the Ministry of Defence would be very, very interested in objects which are entering our airspace and would be very grateful to the public for reporting that, but uh, the opposite is true. And the reason that this memo says that all reports which the Ministry of Defence receive will be destroyed is so that uh, filmmakers, researchers, investigators like me, when we make our Freedom of Information Act 
uh, requests in America and we are um, trying to extend our search so that we can get hold of Ministry of Defense documents, we will get a standard reply saying that all UFO reports from the public are destroyed. That is a lie. That is an absolute corruption of power. And the Ministry of Defense, as far as the UFO phenomenon is concerned, is duping and hoodwinking the public. Mm -hmm.